Okay, hello YouTube again. Um, what I want to do is I want to make a bend um, on this 12 ton uh, hydraulic pipe bender. So what I've got is, what I did was I've got some steel pipe. Inside the centre of the steel pipe I have some copper pipe. And um, what I want to do is I want to bend the copper which is, uh, this is a bending spring sticking out at the end of the copper. I want to bend the copper and the, uh, the steel pipe at the same time. Um, because I won't be able to get a bent piece of copper inside a bent piece of steel. And uh, I'll show you why I need that in a minute. So what I did was, I filled it with water and then I froze it. So I wanted to keep the copper pipe central within the, uh, within the steel pipe. I wanted it to bend at the same time and not kink. So I put a spring, this guy here, which is frozen, I stuck it in the center or you know down the copper so as if I was going to bend it over my knee but um, so I put the copper in or the, the spring in the copper and I put the copper inside the uh, the steel pipe tubing so and this assembly on the end was just to stop the water pouring out of the bottom I stood it in the freezer you know like this with the water in it and it froze uh, it didn't take so this is full of ice and uh, hopefully it acts a bit like sand when you're uh, when you're bending so I have a, a predetermined pencil mark on this thing. Actually I've got two of them and I'm hoping I, I select the right one. So I need um okay, you can't see it because I can barely see it. But anyway, this is ice down the outside of it. And I'm gonna work off that pencil mark. So center of the mark in the center of this thing. Now this is a one inch farmer on this machine, and what I did was I just scribed a couple of um a couple of marks on the center, to help. well you can kind of guess the center in any case, but uh, I just wanted to uh, to identify it anyway. So that's it, it just goes on there, and this guy goes through here. And I go for my mark, and um, if I can find a handle, which is here. Okay, so like a, a car hydraulic jack, just close off the valve, and that's it, start pumping. So here we go. Um, I haven't done this before, so I don't know for definite it's going to work. Uh, my best guess is it will. And uh, so I'm bending the water. That's the ice cracking. This is interesting. Well, this is a 12 ton machine, so it's not going to have problems bending with ice. But it's what happens to copper afterwards. Um, I don't know. But there's no. Um, you know, there's no big drama pumping this. Um, it's the same as uh, as jacking up a car. You know, very easy. So, this was in the freezer, so it was minus 22 or 25 or something. I'm not sure which. But cold anyway. Okay, so yeah, it's bending pretty good. I don't want to go over with the bend. I'd rather go under with it, you know. So if it's not quite 90, that'd be cool. And uh, yeah, it looks about right to me. So I'm just going to ease up and check it, and we'll see what happens. Okay, and there's my bend. So what you've got is, um, you've got a bending spring. This guy, I'm not sure how that's showing up on camera. This um, connection, was its only purpose was to hold that pipe centered within the other pipe. So um, I can't do anything now until the, the ice kind of um, melts and uh, the water pours out and so on. And then I can blow down the centre of the, the copper pipe and see if, uh, if all is well. But uh, so far so good. No explosions. <laughs> well unlikely with, you know, with a bit of ice. But uh, that's it. She's packed solid with, um, with ice inside. The tape was just to hold the spring in position so it didn't go falling through. 
and uh, this assembly was just to make it waterproof on the end. You could do it with many different fittings. This is, you know, what I had in a box, so I just threw it on. Um, but I had already threaded the uh, the steel pipe prior to this, and uh, I don't know if you can see it now. I try to remove the tape. I don't think this is going to work out. But if it if it does work out, um, you'll see. I drilled some holes in this um, at 60 degrees apart. So, you know, I don't think this. Oh, maybe. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I can see them, but I don't have to show show up on camera. Can you see the ice there and here and so on? So as I said, I filled this thing with um, with water, and now it's all ice. So I'm going to have to wait a while for this ice to, to you know disappear. But essentially, anyway, what I've got is I've got um, six holes at 60 degrees apart all the way around, about an inch up from the bottom, or an inch and a inch and a quarter maybe uh, up from the bottom. And the, the deal is, I'm going to cap the end of it allow the copper pipe to come through and um, through like a washer you know with a half inch center so it's going to be quite a tight fit around the copper and it's going to be welded to this and what that's going to do is as the air comes down the, it's going to be forced out sideways you know at uh, 60 degrees apart to each other and uh, the oil is going to drip down the center independent of the air and uh, so that'll be in the stove like this blowing air this direction uh, into some sort of um, you know vaporizing pot and um, and then we'll see. So I mean, I will put this thing together and I'll show it on video. But uh, we get a look at it when it's um, when it's melted. And uh, so, gonna get some coffee and uh, probably some dinner. Go for a walk, <laughs> whatever. It's gonna take a while anyway. So see you in a little bit. Okay, YouTube. I've just bent the pipe um, with the ice inside it. So uh, yeah, great success. No problems with it at all. So you can see a big. Uh, more clearly now maybe. These are the holes that I drilled in it. These are to allow air into the, uh, the combustion chamber and um, they're drilled at 60 degrees apart um, and that's it. 10 mil holes 60 degree apart and um, there's six of them. So 6x six, six is 360 degrees. But in any case what I did was I have copper this is the copper and I have that inside all the way through as one piece um, all the way through that one inch steel pipe. Uh, this end is threaded. I'll show you in a second what that's for. And uh, I put the bending spring inside the copper so that the copper wouldn't kink. The uh, the former takes care of the bend, um, the hydraulic former, um, on this on the steel pipe, and it doesn't kink because of the way it's set up. But copper would, so that's why the spring is in there. And just to prove, um, you know, how good it worked out. If if it had a kink inside the copper, this spring wouldn't want to come out. So you can kind of see it. Anyway, there you go, and with very little effort, spring wants to come out, no problem. Alright, so there's still a bit of water in there from where the ice melted. But uh, yeah, lovely bend, and uh, you know, if you blow on it, you can tell that there's a hole in it. Well, you know, it's not like a compressor or whatever, but yeah, if it had been absolutely um, broken inside, I wouldn't. it wouldn't hold pressure. But that's the setup anyway, so what's going to happen next is... Um, you can see when I push and pull on the on the pipe, it's one piece, so it's a bend and a bend. And the idea is that uh, the oil goes down the half inch copper here, and it comes out here. It goes into the uh, into the stove like this. This end of it is fixed um, to the wall of the stove, and uh, air comes out here, oil at the bottom. Very very simple, very simple. But you know what? It works. <laughs> it works beyond what you would imagine. It just works properly. It works great. Uh, if you keep oil going into it, it comes, you know, um, it returns as massive amount of heat. So you're converting oil into heat and it's a great way of doing it for something so simple. I mean, if you, can, if you can't bend them, um, I'll make them available on my website. And if you can do it yourself, you know, either way they're cheap. You know, you, could, you might have a bit of this knocking around. Uh, the bending machine worked out great. Uh, it's the first time I've owned one. I've used lots of them over the years, but uh, that's the first one I've owned. It's not industrial quality, you know. It's not as solid as something you'll pay, you know, seven or eight hundred dollars for, seven hundred, eight, seven or eight hundred euro for. But uh, yeah, for domestic use, great. It'll do me fine. Um, this is what it looks like when it's in the machine, uh, when it's in the actual uh, solid fuel stove. So this is one I I, I made earlier, <laughs> but 
I needed a, a different dimension from here to here. So that's what I've done on the new one. You know, you can you can knock these up to suit your own stove. So measure your stove, you know, from left to right, whatever that distance is, and whatever the middle distance is, that's what you want. And you want that from the bracket to the center of this pipe coming up, and that's your measurement. So say in this, this case, that's seven inches. So seven inches from here, from the edge of the, the bracket, to the center of the pipe going vertical. So from that point here to here is seven inches. Um, on the newer one, I need a different measurement. So, you know, they can be made for any measurement you want. But, um, yeah, so very, very happy with it. Uh, the ice worked out a treat. It's the first time I've ever used ice to, to uh, bend something. Uh, I have used ice before to kind of stop water in things, but uh, I never actually bent um, anything with it. And it worked great. I mean, it really does want to be uh, remain centered. You know, it's, it's great. So, uh, in case I haven't covered it, I'm going to weld a big washer on the end of that, and that'll centralize the, uh, the half inch pipe into there. Uh, the pipe will come through the washer, the washer will be welded to that, and that forces the air to come out of these holes only. And uh, all that happens then is the oil comes out of it, and I'll chop the, you know, I'll cut the copper down to suit accordingly. This end goes into an elbow. I mean, it could go into any any kind of configuration of fittings you wanted, but it's going to end up like this. I drill the elbow here, and uh, with a half inch hole, and the, the pipe comes out there. So air, in this case, air goes into the bottom here, up along here, down that way and uh, oil comes out here. Air doesn't come out here, air doesn't mix with the oil line whatsoever. And you can see what I meant with the half inch um, uh, washer on the end of it. That's welded to the steel pipe and it's, um, it's, you know, it's a nice tight fit around the, the half inch pipe coming through. So that's the setup. So that's, that is an actual um, waste oil burner, such as it is. I mean it's only a piece of pipe and a, another pipe within it. But it works unbelievably well. Uh, the only problem is, and it, it is a downside, is it's noisy. So uh, maybe I can come up with a, a quieter design, but by God it works great. So this guy here is going to become one of those, and I'll fire it this evening. Um, so I have to go out now for some stuff, and uh, when I come back, I'm going to weld the washer on, put the elbow on, weld the bracket onto it, and uh, I'm going to put it in the stove, so it'll be... Um, yeah, it'll be the the, uh, the guts of another movie or another video for YouTube. Anyway, more later.